so we have given this input array a of size 8 it has 8 elements in it 8, 3, 2, 9, 7, 1, 5, 4 and we want to run merge sort on this input array so what will the algorithm do it will divide this overall problem into two sub problems the overall problem had a size of 8 so the two sub problems are going to have a size of 4 each so the first half of a will be converted into one sub problem and the second half will be converted into the second sub problem now these two sub problems have a size of 4 and when we recursively call merge sort on these smaller sub problems they in turn will be split into more smaller sub problems for example this array 8329 will be split into two parts the first part will have 8 and 3 and the second part will have 2 and 9 and we will invoke merge sort on these two smaller sub problems likewise to to sort this array we will divide it into two parts and the first sub problem will deal with the first two elements and the second sub problem will deal with the last two elements so at this stage our sub problems have a size of 2 and so when we again recursively invoke merge sort on them they will be split into even smaller sub problems the sub problems here now will have a size of 1 because there were two elements here so the size of the sub problem here was 8 the size of the sub problem here was 4 the size of the sub problem here was 2 and now when we invoke merge sort on arrays of size 2 we are going to split these arrays into singleton elements and once we are at the level of singleton elements our merge sort algorithm is going to immediately terminate because it's a terminate on these when invoked on these singleton elements because there's really nothing that the algorithm has needs to do to sort singleton elements and one thing you may notice here is that we made this convenient assumption that the length of array a is a power of 2 right? 8 is to the power 2 and you can see why that assumption is convenient because at every step in this invocation hierarchy as we continue to split these smaller problems into further smaller problems we can always cleanly divide every sub problem into two smaller sub problems because our initial array was a power of 2 and so the size of the of, of these sub problems is is also going to remain always the power of 2. So that's the reason for making that assumption. Now once now once merge sort runs on these singleton elements and returns them because the algorithm doesn't need to do anything, we now need to combine solutions to these sub problems to produce solutions to the original larger sub problems. Right, so 8 and 3 will be merged together so this this line everything above this line corresponds to the dividing and the conquering step steps and below this line we are now going to combine the solutions to the uh, sub problems and generate the solution to the original problem. So when we combine these two sub problems 8 and 3, treating 8 and 3 as singleton arrays, when we merge these two arrays together, we are going to end up with 3 comma 8. Likewise when we merge these two sorted arrays together, we are we'll, going to have an array of size 2, 2, 2 comma 9. This will also be an array of size 2 with the elements 1 and 7 when we merge together these two. And when we merge together 5 and 4, we're going to get 4 comma 5. So 
these are actually the answers to the sub problems here right this was the input to the sub to, 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 to the uh, sub problem and the output is going to be the sorted versions of the input then these the once we have solutions to these sub problems <coughs> in the form of these sorted arrays these four sorted arrays we can then combine we can combine them to yield the solution to these two larger sub problems right so when we combine together with the arrays 3 comma 8 and 2 comma 9 following our merge uh, uh, following the merge step that we looked at in the previous few videos we are going to have 2 comma 3 comma 8 comma 9 as a result of merging these two sorted arrays and by merging these two sorted arrays we are going to end up with 1 comma 4 comma 5 comma 7 so these two sorted arrays are <coughs> the solution to these two sub problems so when the input was 8329, merge sort when invoked on this array would return 2 comma 3 comma 8 comma 9. And merge sort when invoked on this array would lead to 1 comma 4 comma 5 comma 7 via these steps. And finally, these two sorted arrays would then be merged to produce the overall solution to the original problem and actually we looked at precisely these uh, the example of merging together these two arrays over here where we merge together the array 2 comma 3 comma 8 comma 9 with 1 comma 4 comma 5 comma 7 and we got this array this merged array 1 2 3 4 Five, seven, eight, nine, and that's what we get here. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. This is the solution to the original problem. So, when the input, this was the input array, if you recall. And so, the output is going to be this array. Now, I have shown here. Uh, in, in the analysis that we did when we ran through this example, we were splitting these subproblems into smaller subproblems in parallel. Right? So we were looking at these four subproblems as if they existed at the same time. But actually, if you go back to the code for Merge Solve, you'll see that we will first invoke Merge Solve, we will first call Merge Solve on the first half of the array. And wait for an answer, and then we will call merge sort on the second half. Wait for an answer, and then merge these two sorted arrays to yield the merged array A. So, likewise, the invocation calls are going to look a bit different. So, firstly, we will invoke merge sort on the first half of the array on 8329. Then when merge sort is invoked on the smaller sub problem, it will first be then invoked on this even smaller sub problem 8 comma 3. And then when merge sort is invoked on this, it's going to be first invoked on A. And then when this returns the singleton and element 8 as the answer, then it's going to be invoked on the second half of this array, which is 3. And then once both these solutions have been generated, then we'll combine them together to yield 3 comma 8. This is here. And once 3 comma 8 is returned as the solution to this to the first half of this input array, then we're going to invoke merge sort on the second half, which is 2 comma 9, and again walk down this invocation path. And then once the solution to uh, once the solution to this sub problem is returned, it's basically 2 comma 9 itself, then these two solutions are going to be combined to yield 2 comma 3 comma 8 comma 9. 
as the solution to this subproblem. And then once this 2, 3, 8, 9 is returned as the solution to the first half of the array, uh, as the sorted version of the first half of this array, then word sort is going to be called on the second half. And so you can see that the invocation calls are not going to be parallelized. They are going to proceed uh, in kind of a, uh, you can say, a, um, some kind of a pre order level, say, approximately, if you just focus on this region of the page. So, uh, I'd like to keep, I'd like you to keep that distinction in mind between the actual sequence of invocation calls and the way the calls are depicted in this diagram as if, you know, they're being done level by level. They're not actually being done level by level, they're, they're being done in, in, in kind of a pre-order uh, traversal of this tree diagram that you see.